Hi, I'm Jean-Marc Prieur, a program manager on the Visual Studio team. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can benefit from code maps to understand the design of your code. I'm going to begin with a quick review of code maps, what they are, and what changed in Visual Studio 2015. Then, I'll do a demo of three scenarios, which will also provide to the opportunity to me to indicate the new features in VS 2015. These scenarios are use code map to understand patterns into the code, use code map to understand the design of your solution, and use code map to help remove unwanted dependencies. Finally, I'll share with you a few pointers to resources that will help you to dig in further. So what are code maps? They are visualizations of the design or architecture of code inferred directly from the code. They show code elements in their context, for example, methods in types, in namespaces, in assemblies, and in solution folders. They also show relationships between these. The map I'm showing you contains an inheritance diagram that we'll build during our first demo. It's embedded into the structure of a solution, which is the object of the other two demos. CodeMap evolved from the dependency graphs in VS 2010, and we've done a big investment in VS 2015 to make them more usable, in particular on the three scenarios demoed here. The key improvements in VS 2015 are listed here. In order to explain the features, I need some code to work with. I've chosen to use code of an internal tool we built to experiment with various visualizations of an agile backlog stored as work items in Team Foundation server or in Visual Studio Team Services. This is a .NET MVC web app which talks to TFS APIs. For this first demo, I'm working on code and I want to understand the inheritance dependencies in that code. Let's take a look. So here, I'm in Visual Studio, in the story map solution, and I've already built it. And uh, I'm going to create a new code map, go to the solution explorer, and drag and drop a class which I'm interested in, work item. And what happens is work item, the class, happens in the context of its namespace, assembly, and solution folder. And that is new in VS 2015. If I show the legend, you will see what the icons and the colors represent. The green thing is really the result, and there is the possibility of clearing it so that you, you see the true color of, uh, of this class. From this code map, I can navigate to code. So I've double-clicked in the same way, and let me augment a bit the size of the code map here. I can take the base interface and right-click and show on code map. From this menu, I have also the opportunity of bringing more of this. But for the moment, let's use the show on code map. And you see that you can add really code elements from anything, including class view and object model and even the file explorer. Here, I'm interested in building the inheritance relationship. So having this base class, I'm going to use the show all derived types command. And that shows me a code map with all the derived types. But that's not quite I what I want. Let's observe the colors of these links. These links represent relationships. And what I want to keep is the green ones, which are the interface implementation and the inheritance. I don't want to see the calls and so on. So I'm going to the filter window, which is new in VS 2015 as well. And I'm going to remove the calls, remove the references, the return types. That's more like it. I have something which looks like an inheritance diagram, although it's not laid out as I want, because I personally prefer inheritance diagram to have the the base types at the top. So I can change the layout of locally this namespace by applying a bottom to top layout. And here we go. Now that we've seen that code map can help us navigate in the code and understand the patterns in code, let's imagine for a minute that I'm looking at a solution I'm not familiar with. And I want to understand the entry points of this application. 
And I want to understand the architecture of the solution and especially the dependency with respect to TFS. I'm going to request a new code map for the solution and I get an overview, a complete overview of the solution. Since I'm interested in TFS, I can expand the externals and find what is about Team Foundation. I can select them all, right click to add, add the parent group which I will name TFS. Then I can move this TFS group outside the externals and suppress. Let me re relay out. I have a nice representation of my solution, group by solution folders, including the test assets and with the dependencies with TFS. If I click on something, I can see the dependencies, and I, I observe that, for example, there are dependencies on TFS, both from the model, but also from the website, which is a bit weird. Indeed, if I use the legend, you see that we now decorate the assemblies with icons depending on the project type, including the test project. So here, my goal would be, one, to understand the dependency on TFS and also find the entry points of this application to be able to debug it. So I'm going to exclude the test assets because I'm interested in the product code, expand these two assemblies, and then something which is new in 2015 is the possibility of skipping levels. For example, I can not represent the assembly level, and then I see the namespaces in the context of solution folder, and again, I can hide the solution folders, and this time I see the dependencies between namespaces. And again, I got the confirmation that there is something wrong here. The controllers in this ISP.NET application depend on TFS. We'll get back to that in the third demo. So for now, I'm interested in understanding the entry points in the application. Because this is a layered diagram, I can uh, understand a bit more what is here. So I'm going to take this namespace, create a new graph from the selection, expand, and here, expand this group, and I have the possibility now of understanding what the entry points are, and of course, you know, I can navigate to the code to put breakpoints. We've seen in the previous demo that we had an unwanted dependency. Let's now understand the effort to remove it. In the previous demo, we found that something was a bit weird. Indeed, uh, the controllers is depending on TFS, which is not expected. Let's try to understand this unwanted dependency in order to remove that. I can use the show contributed links in new code map to have a view of what really depends on TFS. And you see that that extracts only the types and the namespaces which are related, and I can so I, I see here that one class in the controller depends on TFS, and I can have details by doing that again, and now I see that only, in fact, two methods of this class have a dependency on TFS, and I, I can see which types. So that's it for the demos. I hope you found them useful. To conclude, here are some resources you can follow to find more information. I've included documentation on MSDN, a video on channel 9, the blog where we announce and introduce new features, and the user voice site where you can post suggestions. Thanks for watching.